Hi, this is Eugene. And this is Thomas. From UC Santa Barbara. In conjunction with Strike University, we are putting together a strike syllabus where we'll be examining some societal factors that have brought us to our current moment. We will also be talking about the means through which people can resist and protest these social forces. We hope you enjoy. Our topic for the first week is COLA, COVID-19, and community in the classroom. So we wanna start just by getting a sense of what y'all know about COLA. So we will link a poll um, that you can respond to here. Yeah, some things are, what is COLA? How did you hear about it? What are your thoughts? And how do you feel about it? How do you feel? Uh, some background, uh, because we recognize that people are coming to this in a lot of different places. So COLA stands for a cost of living adjustment. Uh, and that this really comes out of uh, a definition by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development that defines being rent burdened. It's paying 30% of your monthly income to uh, rent. And that if you pay over 50%, you're severely rent burdened. So with, at UC Santa Barbara, uh, using some data that we collected, we found that TAs on average spend 51% of their monthly wages to housing. Um, so this movement, the COLA movement, uh, really is centered around this cost of living adjustment. And that these, these, the strikes that have been going on um, at starting at UC Santa Cruz, but really ex uh, going throughout the entire UC and beyond um, are because of these longer standing structural issues. Um, so when we think about the university, we want to really emphasize that it is a, a profit driven enterprise, that the logics of the university are wrapped up in uh, logics of business and that it is about um, a, bo a bottom line and profit and that education is the product. And that's really how it's thought about. Um, when we talk about housing and costs of living, we also want to recognize that we have different um, identities and places in which we can access housing and, um, and food and just basic requirements. So when talking about a housing issue, one thing we hear a lot is, oh, could we um, just build more housing? And that, that decision to build more housing uh, ends up bulldozing over low-income people, people of color, displacing large groups of people that don't have access to the types of power and privilege that other people might be who are at universities or talking about displacing people. But wait, Eugene, can you tell me about the history of COLA? Oh, I definitely could, Thomas. Thanks for asking. So in this broader movement, we talk, we're talking about UC Santa Cruz where this started, that our housing, con or our, um, as graduate student workers, we have a union contract that um, was negotiated by our union two years ago. And Santa Cruz is largely uh, not in favor of this contract. That in fact, at their campus, at least 85% of graduate student workers voted no to it. But because our union is UC-wide, it passed. Um, and so for two years, they've been protesting this. And it really coalesced at the end of fall quarter uh, in 2019 in a grading strike. So about 200 to 300 TAs withheld winter or uh, yeah fall quarter grades. Um, and as you can see here they had um, after withholding that they were threatened with dismissal with firing um, that and at, at on uh, February um, 10th when they started being on strike. So um, this is week one of spring quarter for us and so they've been on strike for seven weeks. Uh, about 85 TAs were withholding grades at that time. Um, so at UC Santa Cruz, the very first day of their strike, um, going on a full work stoppage, uh, the uh, UCOP, UC Office of the President, ordered uh, police in full riot gear to appear at their picket line. Um, at the tune of $300,000 a day. And they have remained there since, uh, uh, well, until all of this COVID fun stuff has been happening. Uh, so uh, while at the picket line, they charged the picket line, they, uh, they injured students, they arrested uh, 17 to 18 students on the second or third day. Um, they have uh, really been, thinking that these straight TAs are enemies of this, the UC, this is how the language that they use. Um, and that other places in the UC um, 
like at UC Irvine, the poli uh, a black woman, an alumnus, was arrested for being black, essentially. Um, she was, had no connection to the cold movement, but because police were so in, like mechanized to be seeing COLA protesters as enemies, this is what happened. So I like to highlight the police violence because I think for us graduate workers, this is just something that um, has galvanized us into the movement. Um, and at Santa Barbara, our strike started on uh, February 27th. So we've been on strike for a month now, um, a full work stoppage. And we're withholding uh, grades for the winter quarter, which our deadline is tomorrow, the 31st. So we'll see what our numbers are after that. We've moved to a digital picket line. We used to have this like lovely, Pick a line with lots of rallies and, and music and congregating that has moved digitally. So people will be uh, adhering to that picket line in different ways as we go on. Thomas, can you talk about COVID? What's going on with that? Yeah, well, COLA was kind of a big movement um, that was causing disruption and drawing attention on campus. But since the sort of reality of COVID-19 has become something we have to deal with in the US, things have shifted everywhere. Um, COVID-19 has changed the world and the university learning landscape specifically, um, as far as it's relevant to us. So as a lot of you are experiencing, students are having to move off campus to avoid being in sort of in large crowds and risking infection. Um, there are skyrocketing levels of unemployment or underemployment. Last week, I think it was like 3.3 million unemployment claims were filed. Um, there's been a run on groceries and basic necessities, which make normal groceries hard to find. And even frankly, when they're easy to find, it's like a psychic nightmare to have to go to the store, just not knowing what you're going to be confronting. Um, and so amidst this very uh, chaotic and crisis uh, environment, the COLA, the UC COLA movement has responded um, and you see by sort of shifting or adding new tools to the toolkit of how we're striking. So UC Irvine, there's something called the social welfare strike, which um, involves mutual aid efforts, teach-ins and other things of that nature. Um, and it had not been something COLA was doing previous to UC Irvine calling that. The next bullet point um, provides a link that you can look at that has a sort of overview of the infection rate and death tolls both globally and nationally of COVID-19. If that's something you're interested in, it might be kind of hard to be confronted with some of those numbers, so you might not want to look at it, but I think it is very useful just to show how it's been spreading and to kind of maybe take us a little bit out of our local moment and put us more in context with the world at large and what's going on. And so as COVID is disrupting so many things in daily life, it's also in fact impacting your education, which is evident right now because you're either taking Zoom classes or listening to this recording, which was made on Zoom, which is probably something you don't usually do. Um, so then the question becomes, other than just COVID in and of itself, how did we get to the class Zoom, a very hilarious um, neologism that Eugene and I came up with. <laughs> um, so the global health pandemic of COVID-19 is unveiling a lot of the social injustices and kind of oppressive systems that have always existed in society. Um, but specifically, as it's relevant to us right now, it's also intersecting in a lot of ways the project of the for-profit university, what you could also call the neoliberal university. And so the neoliberalism is the push to privatize previously state or publicly owned sectors. It's also known as free market capitalism or efforts towards deregulation in general. Another way to think about it is that it's uh, the attempt to structure, or sorry, the movement to structure as much of society on market principles as possible. So you might, in that, to that effect, you might recall that capitalism creates crises that in its attempts to solve them, further entrench capitalist elites and create greater crises in the future. And one very kind of immediate example of this is last week, the EPA lifted regulations on emissions under the kind of umbrella of co uh, coronavirus related issues. So they're allowing more pollution to happen as a kind of solution or a workaround to COVID, which of course is just going to create more problems for our environment and for us. But more specifically in this context, that was a really gross lip smack, I apologize. But um, in this context, the neoliberal university's response to COVID-19 has included a couple of uh, measures, which has involved a unilateral move of online instruction uh, to online instruction without any kind of reevaluation of what that education is worth a lack of centralized training for instructors who are facing new digital learning environments, and a proliferation of private educational services that are being presented as supplements to traditional 
instructor crafted instruction. So just for some behind the curtain information, a lot of textbook companies have been sending emails to instructors offering access to free online modules, free online lessons, free online textbooks, which seems really great. And they're doing it as a kind of charitable thing right now, but can be a way to replace instructor created content with corporate created content. And can also be something that universities may look at as a cost cutting measure in the future. They may think if we have all this textbook stuff, why would we be paying instructors? Why would we be paying TAs to do this stuff that's already available online? Yeah. There's some textbook companies. We're also on Zoom, which is a company that is not a school. Zoom is not a school, but here we are learning on it. <laughs> um, yeah, remember that uh, in thinking about profits, uh, one thing that capitalism does is that it largely replaces people. So Thomas and I are not here to say that online instruction is not a good thing. In a lot of ways, it is. but. Um, but the way that it gets used in capitalism is to make people redundant to robots and now to a digital learning environment and without removing our labor. So the ideal world would be that we could be redundant in productive ways where we could have more leisure time, but that doesn't happen. Instead, we have to work harder, find new uh, places to gain employment. Um, and in the case of the university, if we are made redundant by recordings, you as students will be paying for uh, past knowledge that is not current. You won't be interfacing with like real people. You'll just be seeing recordings and paying exorbitant amount of money uh, for a less valuable experience. Um, so for the purposes of this, so we're coming kind of back, we went really global talking about coronavirus, COVID-19, and, and now we're going back to, what does this mean in our classroom? So maybe you are in uh, our classroom <laughs> in spring 20, 2020, maybe you are not. Um, nice to Zoom meet you, but uh, what, uh, what we wanna kind of highlight for, at least for our students, is that um, in terms of this class, we will be withholding grades, so participating in a spring uh, grade strike. Uh, that withholding grades always comes with a caveat that if you need a grade for any reason, we'll give you a grade. Um, and we have part of uh, the COLA movement with lots of charts and graphs about what, if you need a grade, how you can get it. We'll be altering lesson plans. So this is on uh, Strike University. So we'll be, um, as a collaborative UC-wide way of sharing information related to the strike and alternate um, forms of knowledge, really. And then we'll be participating in a social welfare strike. So UC Irvine really started this idea and this movement of focusing on our community and how we can benefit each other, and thinking about mutual aid more than just business as usual. And on that note, these are just some of the ways in which people are participating in the COLA movement. Not everyone is doing all of these actions, and some people are sort of adjusting based on our current circumstances. Just be aware that this is sort of what's going on and what COLA means in this moment. Um, do you want to talk about the next point? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's important to remember that you, Y-O-U, capital, as you can see here, are being impacted by how the university is changing. Um, so we would like to echo that the like online learning is um, substandard in this moment, just because your instructors will not have had time to fully flesh out what these online platforms mean you will probably have lots of confusing Zoom meetings where people don't know where buttons are or how to share screens. Um, it, it will be substandard um, as everyone tries to figure out what this digital landscape means. It also creates an opportunity to create, uh, make demands and shape your future as university students. So feeling powerless in this time of uncertainty is totally understandable and normal. And as your instructors, we really want to emphasize that that these like chaotic wild times are completely normal right now. Um, and it's very normal to be feeling all kinds of ways. This probably doesn't come across because it's such a professionally produced presentation we're giving, but I'm very uncertain of what's going on. I'm very unhinged and I don't really know how I feel about everything. I can't process everything as quickly as it's happening. So if you're feeling those ways as well, that's completely normal. And what we feel as instructors is important is to be in community with each other. Because as much as, as um, crises do cause these kinds of uncertainties, they also create spaces in which new things are possible. So we're gonna talk about what's gonna be possible for us in our classrooms. Yeah, 
And our really goal for what making this slideshow and doing this presentation is to create some kind of structure to be able to support each other um, and really reimagine our place in the university and the world overall. A time of crisis is a, a, a time that is creates more precarious positions for a lot of people, but can also be a way for us to move forward in a radical, uh, constructive way. And we're hoping to harness this kind of wild, uh, chaotic energy into something. Hey, you're wild queer energy. <laughs> well, yeah, wild, definitely queer. wild queer non-binary energy and move it forward into something that is productive in the world. And so on that note, we're going to talk, finish by talking about, in the midst of everything that's happening, the crisis and possibility and kind of threats in this moment, what our commitments are to each other. Because as much as we are physically isolated right now in our sort of quarantine zones, um, we can still find trust and community. And those are important sources of resilience during trying times. Yeah. Um, your instructor will make their own commitments to you. Uh, some of the ones that we outlined for our students was, uh, to do the best job in these circumstances to make sure that you receive an education, to be responsive to and supportive of your unique needs in these unusual circumstances, to actively work toward a society in which those of us most vulnerable so find support and security, and to be present and make space for education, and to have fun when we are together. So a lot of, a lot of things are super serious all the time, and we would love to find levity in these moments if we can. Levity, yeah, levity and community. And so these are some of the commitments that we are making to our students and also things that you can, y'all can commit to your instructors, but also to one another. Um, this is amidst the time when the sort of precarity of life is really being thrown in our faces. Um, we can really be there for each other. And that's something that we can hope, what we can think we can achieve through education and through an education that's committed to ending injustice and um, creating equity in the world. Yes, love that. Mm. So that note, um, this was kind of your crash course of COLA and COVID and how those things are intersecting and what that means for some of us. Um, next week, we're going to look a little bit more at the immediate sort of context um, of where we're in, the UCs in context, history of tuition hikes, student suppression, and California bullshittery. Um, just to think, just to look at the ways in which the systems that have driven the university towards a profit motive have existed before coronavirus and maybe a lot we can make ourselves more aware of some of those factors. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Um, you'll see us each week on Strike University. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll be happy to produce this like exciting queer content for you every time. We will also stop immediately if anyone doesn't like it. So just let us know, we will end it the whole thing. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye Eugene. Bye. Bye. Uh, we did it. Did we do it?